Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we'll be talking about the AMZ nerf. So quite a few Ray Leader streamers, DK players have had uh, takes on this. Um, I know Max has talked about it a lot on Twitter, Scribe put out a poll about it. Pretty much anyone that plays DK has made some kind of tweet regarding the AMZ change. So if you weren't aware, on the PTR right now, AMZ's been nerfed, um, so they made a few different nerfs to it and they also changed how it works. They changed the cooldown from a 2 minute to a 3 minute, they changed the base duration from 10 seconds down to 8 seconds, and they added a cap on how much damage you can essentially mitigate with it, um, which scales based on your max health and your versatility. So during rate testing, the tooltip cap on my AMZ was about 54-55k, depending on how much versatility I had on my gear. Um, so this means that if you drop AMZ on your whole raid, um, 20 people in Mythic, and you know you take more damage than whatever the cap is, each player gets about um, between 3k and 3.5k um, magic damage mitigated per person. So essentially, it is just a worse rally now uh, if you're using it on your entire raid. So obviously, absolutely massive nerf uh, compared to what it was before. I do agree that a nerf was needed on AMZ because there is no other melee that brought utility even close to it. Um, on most fights, obviously if it was physical damage, AMZ was useless. But on most fights, AoE damage tends to be magic damage. So AMZ Outclass, Rally, Darkness, and I guess those are the two only raid cooldowns that DPS can bring, um, or melee DPS. So AMZ needed a nerf, but they nerfed it hard, nuked it from orbit. Um, a few things that I wanted to talk about is kind of how AMZ changes, how you want to use it going forward instead of how you were using it in Castle Natria and also what this means for DK's raid spots in Mythic Progression. So, a few things on how this AMZ nerf actually works and how... Um, the first thing, whenever I saw that there's a 50k damage cap, I was like, okay, that's obviously very bad if you split 50k across your entire raid. Like, if I look at my AMS, um, my AMS is 20k only on myself. So 50k across the entire raid is not much. It's equivalent to about 6% of everyone's max health uh, against magic damage. So I instantly thought, okay, so whenever you're taking big AoE hits that are magic damage, you just drop multiple AMZs. So then you'll be able to absorb up to, um, so let's say if you drop two AMZs, the magic cap would be 100k. But that's not actually how it works. If you take a single hit, you don't benefit from multiple AMZs. So I understand why they did this because they didn't want like very large hits to be preventable by stacking multiple AMZs. Um, so just keep that in mind. However, on a very small individual hits that happen very frequently, if you think Sire P1, where you have a ton of ads spawn and they're each dealing damage, not a ton of damage, they're dealing low amounts of damage, but very frequently to your entire raid, in that situation, you can actually stack multiple AMZs, and as one gets used up, the other one will, will kick in, and so on and so forth. Um, so against a lot of small hits, you can stack multiple AMZs, but against one big hit, you cannot stack multiple AMZs. Um, so that's one thing where it's changed. Another thing is how you actually want to use AMZ now. After we've done Mythic testing, um, I think we've Mythic tested four bosses at this point. Maybe more, I don't remember. Um, but it's very apparent that using AMZ on your whole raid is still okay. It feels like a budget rally that you actually have to stand in. Um, but where it's pretty strong still is using it on a small number of players or your tanks uh, to prevent specific debuffs. If we go into the dungeon journal for the second boss or third boss of the raid, the nine, on... They have an ability that essentially puts out debuffs on four different players, and these debuffs need to be dispelled until they all end up on one player, then they coalesce, and the debuff disappears and leaves an effect on the ground. 
So once you've dispelled two or three debuffs onto one player, so there's a person running around with three stacks, they're going to be taking a very large amount of ticking damage. So for, a, for an ability or a mechanic like this, AMZ is actually still pretty useful because it's a small number of players, so that 50k absorb cap is distributed among four players or three players, depending on how many are taking damage. Instead of your whole raid, it becomes a lot more beneficial. Same goes for tanks. Um, there are quite a few tank abilities that are just hard magic hitters. So for those, you can actually just drop AMZ on your tank, and it's going to be a 20% magic DR with a 50k absorb cap on them. So tank abilities do hit pretty hard, and if there's any other AoE damage going out or anything like that, you should make pretty good use of your AMZ. Now, was this nerf justified, nerfing it this far? I believe that the absorb cap should be a lot higher. First of all, I made a tweet that I don't believe it should scale with versatility. It is a very weird stat to make it scale off of. Um, so it scales off of max health and versatility. For tanks, tank AMZ, blood DK AMZ is a lot better than DPS DK AMZ. First of all, they have a lot more max health and they tend to play a lot higher versatility because they're tanks and versatility is a good stat um, for being a tank. Whereas a DPS DK, you have a lot lower max health and you don't really tend to play versatility for raid. If you're playing both Unholy and Frost, you want crit and mastery, and versatility usually ends up being one of your lowest priorities. So the versatility scaling for PvE does not make sense. For PvP, on the other hand, versatility is going to be your main secondary stat that you want. So it makes sense that for PvP, it was to have some sort of versatility scaling, but this nerf was specifically aimed at PvE, in my opinion. Um, so for me, it doesn't make much sense that there's any versatility component to it. It should only be max HP um, because that's going to scale throughout the expansion with your max HP. But this, the 50k cap, um, so even raid buffed going in during mythic testing, the tooltip was 54k. So I believe that, you know, depending on your gear level, how much versatility you have, you'll get anywhere between 50 and probably higher end of, uh, of 58, 59 maybe, but that's still not a lot. So the absorb cap should definitely be increased. And another indirect impact that the change to AMZ had was on the AMZ conduit. So the AMZ conduit largely regarded as the best endurance conduit for DPS DKs in Castle Natria is essentially a dead conduit now. So it increased your AMZ's radius, which is like nice from a positional perspective. Um, people are not as restricted on where they have to stand and it increases the duration by, th by 3.2 seconds. So in CN, you would drop AMZ and it would just be up for like, you know, 13.2 seconds, which is an absolute eternity when you're taking AOE damage. But now as soon as the AOE or the absorb cap is met on your AMZ, it's going to disappear. So, for example, looking at the Guardian of the First Ones, which whenever he runs out of energy, starts doing big AOE slams that deal magic damage. You drop your AMZ, you take one magic slam, your AMZ disappears. So what's the point of extending its duration by 3.2 seconds if as soon as you drop it, it's just going to get used up? So your AMZ, if your AMZ lasted the whole 8 seconds, it means that you just place it at the wrong time. Um, so this conduit went from being like a S plus tier conduit to just being dog shit tier and it's probably never going to get used. So um, that was one indirect effect that the AMZ nerf had on the conduits that you're going to be playing going into the next raid tier. So lastly, how does this affect the DK's raid spot? Um, in CN, it was not uncommon to see even three DPS DKs in for a boss because one, their damage was really good, the damage profile they had, and two, AMZ was absolutely insane. So going into next tier, I do believe that you're not going to see as many DKs in the high-end mythic raiding scene. 
um, being slotted for like progression bosses just because their damage is now gotten to a point where it's actually matched or outclassed by certain um, other melee classes, other ranged classes in particular. Um, so it would have to be very specific scenarios where you want to bring multiple DKs. I still believe that you'll see probably one, maybe two per raid, depending on the boss, but it is highly, highly doubtful that you'll ever see, um, you know, three DKs or more slotted for a boss just because of how insane their damage slash utility is. So overall, I think if you're a DPS DK going into the next raid, you're still going to have a raid spot. The AMZ nerf didn't absolutely destroy DKs. Um, the damage we do is still good, especially in execute and for mythic progression execute tends to be the more hectic phases um, and on quite a few of the bosses in going into next tier, they tended to make the execute phases more difficult. Um, so there's definitely potential to bring DPS DKs just for the execute um, damage that they bring instead of the utility. However, on bosses where execute is not as important and you need more like just overall damage, DKs tend to seem a bit outclassed by certain range classes. So we'll see exactly where that ends up being as far as tuning because we haven't really seen too much tuning in the melee category, Demon Hunters got buffed. But other than that, there have, haven't been any tweaks that we've seen so far to damage profiles. Um, it's mostly been on range classes that they buffed and nerfed a few things here and there. So let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about the AMZ nerf in particular? Do you agree with it? Do you think it should have gotten nerfed more, uh, nerfed less? I know a lot of healers have very strong opinions about AMZ um, on going either way of should it be even in the game or should, you know, magic and the raid utility that is healer oriented only be accessible to healers. So yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you think, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.